Welcome to the Peak of Geek, where we've hit the top with no plans to stop. So in 2023, the Walt Disney Company celebrated its 100th anniversary. And as is typical when celebrating such an impressive milestone, you tend to reminisce and look back. And when doing so, if I'm being completely honest, there's something that bothers me, and it has for a while. And this feels like the perfect time to get it off my chest. In the famous words of Walt Disney, it all started with a mouse. And while that's true, it also begs the question, where is the full-length Mickey Mouse adventure we've all been waiting for? In 1995, I feel like we got a glimpse of what could have been with the theatrical short Runaway Brain. But then, what happened? Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a quick look at what came before. Walt Disney's first successful cartoon co-creation was Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, as designed by Walt and Ub Iwerks. But after 27 animated shorts and a disagreement over the contract Walt shared with Universal Pictures, he quit. As the story goes, on the train home from that fateful meeting, Walt would come up with a new character, one he would completely own. And this time, it wouldn't be a rabbit, it would be a mouse. Mickey Mouse's first produced cartoon was Plain Crazy, an ode to American aviator Charles Lindbergh. But the more famous recognizable short and the first cartoon ever to debut with a synchronized sound was Steamboat Willie in 1928. Throughout the 1920s and 30s, the team at Disney Animation Studio would continue to refine their craft and introduce more characters into the mix. Those first couple shorts already established Minnie and Peg Leg Pete, but other animal friends like Pluto, Goofy, R.I.P. Dippy Dog, Donald Duck, Clarabelle Cow, Horace Horse Collar, and many, many more would help grow Mickey's character and the world they inhabit. After the theatrical release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937, the team continued to focus on feature films, with most of the team working on the follow-up Pinocchio. At the same time, Walt had noticed a decline in popularity with the Mickey Mouse shorts, so they began developing a new short called The Sorcerer's Apprentice. But production costs began to rise, and in order to justify its release, Disney switched gears and decided to bundle the short with seven others, set them all to classical music conducted by Leopold Stokowski, title it Fantasia, and release the whole thing as a feature film. A few years later, Disney would try a similar approach to keep the main mouse relevant with 1947's Fun and Fancy Free. The main selling point of this film was a retelling of the classic fairy tale Jack and the Beanstalk, with Mickey, Donald, and Goofy sharing the role of poor Jack. This idea of taking Disney characters and having them play parts from established fiction would become a bit of a habit they would almost never break. As if to justify putting this one in theaters, the team included another cartoon short about a love-struck bear named Bongo, and framed both cartoons around live-action segments featuring ventriloquist entertainer Edgar Bergen and his puppet pals- Oh, jeez, don't sneak up on me like that. There's Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snurd, kind of creating an unintentional horror movie here. When compared to Fantasia, however, Fun and Fancy Free is a much shorter film, barely passing the one-hour mark. It would be another 36 years until Mickey Mouse would be seen in theaters again. And this time, it was even shorter. Mickey's Christmas Carol may have become an annual holiday rewatch, but it's more of an Uncle Scrooge story than a Mickey Mouse one. Again, Mickey and his friends are playing roles, this time from the pages of Charles Dickens. This 26-minute short would hit theaters alongside repeat screenings of The Jungle Book and The Rescuers. And seven years later, Mickey and Friends would reunite for another theatrical short, this one based on the work of Mark Twain with The Prince and the Pauper. This one would hit screens alongside The Rescuers Down Under. Then, in 1995, one member of the Disney gang would get his own full-length theatrical movie adventure, complete with crisp, hand-drawn animation. But, it wasn't our pal Mickey Mouse. Nope, it was... Yeah! That's right, a full-length sequel to the Disney afternoon cartoon classic, Goof Troop, would hit the big screen, appropriately titled, A Goofy Movie. Now, I love this movie. It's like a 9 out of 10 for me. The story, with its simple but occasionally serious moments, the beautiful animation, and the music, especially Tevin Campbell as Powerline, everything about this is pure happiness. But there's something about this movie that will always represent disappointment for me. And funnily enough, 
It has nothing to do with the actual movie itself. Before Goofy Movie hit theaters, I remember watching a making of documentary on TV. And at some point, they teased what I thought was another upcoming movie. It had a similar animation style, and it looked incredible. Instead of Goofy, this one starred Mickey Mouse and was called Runaway Brain. To me, it was crystal clear what the plan was. First they made a movie about Goofy, then would be the one about Mickey, and then maybe even Donald. Oh, you sweet summer child. The last time I'd seen Mickey in a movie about him and his friends was one I mentioned earlier, Prince and the Popper. And while my VHS copy was lovingly worn out from repeated watches, I still remember thinking, why are Mickey and his friends pretending to be these other characters? Why can't Mickey just be himself? Years later, I would discover that Runaway Brain has become a bit of a regret for the Walt Disney Company. This slightly darker take on the mouse, which is very, very tame by today's standards, has seemingly been swept under the rug. It has only been released once on this out-of-print collection of Mickey Mouse shorts. You can't even find it on Disney+. Plus. And that's saying something. Even superhero guinea pig movie G-Force, the awful Inspector Gadget live-action take starring Matthew Broderick, and the even worse direct-to-DVD sequel starring French Stewart in the role are all on there for your viewing pleasure. You can't see my air quotes, but know that they are there. It's worth noting that during production of Runaway Brain, the original idea for a darker, revitalized take on Mickey was a short called Tourist Trap, which was about Donald and Mickey taking a vacation and Donald trying to kill Mickey. Like, what? I mean, I sort of want to see it now, but... Wow. No. What we did get with Runaway Brain is a semi-remake of The Mad Doctor, a 1933 short where Mickey has to save Pluto from a maniacal mad scientist before realizing it was just a dream. The mad scientist in Runaway Brain won Dr. Frank and Ollie, a nice nod to Disney animators Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, is voiced by Kelsey Grammer from Frasier, and is an obvious reference to Dr. Frankenstein. But finally, Mickey is not playing a role in Mary Shelley's classic novel. This time, he's just Mickey, and he's trying to make some cash to take Minnie on an anniversary trip to Hawaii, which he kind of forgot about because he was too distracted playing a video game of Snow White. Uh, where is that, by the way? So Mickey answers a want ad offering the exact amount he needs for the trip in exchange for a mindless day's work. What follows is a sequence where the good doctor switches Mickey's brain with our Frankenstein monster, named Julius, who looks more than a little like good old Pete. Mickey's monstrous design when Julius's brain has been swapped is amazing. This definitely got people's attention, and according to Disney, it was for the wrong reasons. Anyway, Monster Mickey finds a photo of Minnie in his wallet and goes after her. So Mickey, now in Julius slash Pete's body, has to go rescue her. I have to say, Mickey's voice coming out of this hulking beast is kind of hilarious. And of course, Mickey saves his gal and even finds a way to bring her to Hawaii. Apparently the idea that Mickey was briefly possessed didn't sit right with some of the audiences who saw Runaway Brain. But that didn't stop the short from receiving a nomination for Best Animated Short Film at the 68th Academy Awards, though it lost to a Wallace and Gromit cartoon called A Close Shave. The early 1990s seemed to be Disney's experimental phase in more ways than one. Before former chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg left Disney for DreamWorks Animation in 1994, Runaway Brain was one of the last projects he supported. While I disagree with a lot of the changes he made at the studio, I mean, how dare you cut content from the Black Cauldron? We'll get into that another day. He was also behind some of Disney's more experimental successes, like The Great Mouse Detective and one of the greatest movies of all time, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Coincidentally, Mickey and Donald both appeared in extended sequences alongside Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck respectively. But part of me thought this was yet another frustrating tease to see a newly animated Mickey living alongside so many other familiar animated characters in Toontown. Where's that direct-to-DVD, or streaming sequel, huh, Disney? Actually, we almost got something like that a few years back. Gary K. Wolf, author of the book Who Censored Roger Rabbit, which the movie was lightly based on, announced in 2013 that he and writer Eric Von Wadka were working on a semi-prequel to Who Framed Roger Rabbit called The Stooge. 
It would have been a loose remake of a 1952 comedy film starring Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, with Mickey Mouse and Roger Rabbit in similar roles. When Martin's character wants to make it big as a solo performer, he fails miserably. But when the accident-prone Lewis enters the picture, the act is suddenly a success. Seems like this would have been the perfect fit for our animated heroes. While this new take on Mickey never got off the ground, later that same year, something amazing did. Paul Rudish, best known for writing and designing characters for Dexter's Laboratory and the Powerpuff Girls, developed Mickey Mouse's return to animated shorts with a complete redesign that harkens back to Rudish's earlier animation style. These off-the-wall shorts and the ones found in its sequel series, The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse on Disney+, Plus, both feel like a return to the experimental nature of Mickey and his friends found in shorts like Runaway Brain. Honestly, this is probably the best thing that Disney ever let happen to their animated characters. These shorts are equal parts strange and hilarious. And I mean, you'll be laughing so hard while also trying to rewind so you can see what just happened again because it was so ridiculous. In January 2023, the series ended with the appropriately titled Steamboat Silly. But I hope this isn't the last we see of this one-of-a-kind take on Mickey Mouse. Interestingly, Mickey is the only character without his traditional voice actor in this series. He's been replaced by Chris Diamantopoulos. It's as if Disney was still nervous about letting the official voice of the character be heard in this stylishly different take. I guess if we want a longer adventure featuring Mickey Mouse and friends, we'll just have to turn to other forms of media. In 2006, Walt Disney Italy began publishing a high fantasy comic book series called Wizards of Mickey. This was another fantastically experimental idea that really showed Mickey's capability as an epic hero. Speaking of epic, Epic Mickey on Nintendo Wii, and to a lesser degree its sequel, Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two, are excellent examples of what's possible when Mickey leads a full-length interactive adventure. These games feature a morality system, where Mickey can choose to fight his battles with paint or thinner, a metaphor for light and darkness. And yet again, we see fans of this character trying to evolve him with an idea that was conceptually, much like Runaway Brain, much darker but similarly during development, these ideas were considerably toned down. The most well-known version of Mickey in a long-running hero role is without a doubt Kingdom Hearts. With 13 games to play and a new one on the way, this action RPG video game series has become famous for its Disney and Final Fantasy cameos, addictive gameplay, and its overly complicated intertwining narratives. Mickey, as King of Disney Castle, alongside Queen Minnie, is like main playable character Sora, a wielder of the Keyblade, a weapon that can also be used to unlock various things important to the game. Throughout the adventure, Mickey is usually on his own quest, but occasionally shows up to support Sora and his friends, while also shedding light on some confusing backstory. I personally love this series, but its controversy as a staggering amount of games with confusing titles and plots way too hard to follow definitely has some merit. Regardless, I'm still psyched for Kingdom Hearts 4. Then, in 2004, audiences would get to see Mickey Mouse in his last starring feature-length role, The Three Musketeers. Yet again, Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and others would step into the roles of characters from a famous piece of fiction this time by Alexandre Dumas. While this one was clearly designed as a direct-to-VHS slash DVD release, it did technically have a limited theatrical one. But let's be serious, this should not be Mickey's final outing on the big screen. The little guy just shouldn't go out like that. To celebrate the 100th anniversary in 2023, we did get a very cute short film called Once Upon a Studio, where Mickey and many Many other animated characters pop out of their picture frames to take a photo together at the Disney Animation Studio. And while it was fun to see all the deep cut references to the company's extensive history, I want more. Am I the only one still holding out hope for a Mickey Mouse movie? Is he too much of a corporate icon these days? And is Disney too worried about tarnishing their brand like they did with Runaway Brain? Maybe we'll see something one day, but I'm not holding my breath. But what do you think? Does Mickey deserve his own epic movie adventure? Would that bring you out to the theaters? Let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, oh man, you know what I just realized. Since Steamboat Willie is now firmly in the public domain, my wish is going to come true. The question is, do I even want it to? No. 
please no, not like this! Hey hey, hope you're having a super awesome day! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, comment, and subscribe! Thank you so much, and I'll see you real soon! Thank you.